today's session on institutional accreditation. I'm reaching you from Washington, D.C. Actually, by the way, the President of the U.S., Donald Trump, is just across, <laughs> across the street. We are here for the 2019 Council for Higher Education Accreditation Conference attended by participants from over 80 countries, quality assurance practitioners all over the world. In this episode, we'll be looking at the A to Z of institutional accreditation. As you are probably aware, we have two major types of accreditation, program accreditation and institutional accreditation. So this session is about giving you some guidance about what institutional accreditation is for the purpose of the review of the National Investors Commission's instrument for conducting institutional accreditation in Nigerian universities. I'm sure you will enjoy this session. Oh yes, I hope you enjoy the session. But let's begin with what we intend to achieve in this session. Uh, six things. We want to operationally define accreditation. That's the breaker framework. And then institutional accreditation within it. We want to state the objectives and benefits of institutional accreditation. There will be some country case studies which we will present on institutional accreditation. And then more importantly, we're going to describe the process and product of institutional accreditation. And we're going to review instruments for institutional accreditation that we have in Nigeria. In this case, the National Investors Commission instrument for institutional accreditation and for the rest of the world. And then we're going to have a forecast on the future of institutional accreditation. But before we begin, now look at this lecturer. And you, you find a handful of them all over the place. And he's telling his class, in this course, my dear students, nobody will get an A. Because A is for God. B is for me, Mr. Lecturer. And C is for the serious students. Then you can share the D's and the E's among yourselves. That means that we need to revitalize our system. And this is why uh, the Executive Secretary of the National Investors Commission, Abubakar Damu Rashid, has come up with what we have now labeled the Rashid Revitalization Plan. That's a blueprint on the rapid revitalization of university education in Nigeria. By 2023, we should have the, uh, the Nigeria University system rapidly revitalized. And who is driving it? Nobody else. That is academic eminence, Professor Abubakar Adamu Rashid. Fondly called Baba Rashid, you know, by all of us. You know, he's the father of the Nigeria University system. And he has asked a group of people to give him advice on a number of issues, including the revitalization plan. And you can see them here, Professor Nimi Briggs, i go very quickly, uh, you can get the details here. Professor Nimi Briggs uh, was Vice Chancellor, University of Padakot, is now currently uh, Pro-Chancellor of Fair University, Lokoja, and he's been CVC chair, everything. Of course, these are five-star general, uh, Professor uh, uh, Atahiru Jega. Everybody knows Professor Jega as INEC, as great vices, law, BUK, and all of that. And this is our big boss. That's Baba Rashid himself. Uh, this is me, Peter Okebukola. Uh, on my left here is uh, the former minister of education. She did wonderfully, wonderfully well, Professor Rukayat Ahmed uh, Rufai. Uh, and of course, this is uh, Professor Michael Faborodi, who was Secretary General of uh, CVC, AVCNU, a former VC of. of uh, University, director of my boss, director of the ES office, director uh, Dr. Christopher Mayaki, the director of open and distance education, Dr. Estaola Mide Adeshino, ah, and a great man, uh, Dr. Suleiman Ramon Yusuf, director of research, uh, innovation, and technology. And this is Professor Chidu Mafiana. He was the uh, is the Middle Past President of African Quality Assurance Network and uh, Middle Past Deputy Executive Secretary of the National Investors Commission. This is a great man. There is a Deputy Director of ICT, Dr. Joshua Atta. I have to introduce this, uh, uh, this is our boss last, and that is Dr. 
Remy Biodon Salu. He is in charge of this accreditation thing. He's director of accreditation at AUC, and uh, he's driving this entire process under the bigger driver that is our Papa uh, Baba Rashid. Uh, there are two other people who are not in this picture. Uh, one is uh, Professor Laraba Sunday, uh, uh, Laraba Abdullahi, Gambo Abdullahi, excuse me, please. Uh, she was Vice Chancellor University of Abuja. She did very, very well. Uh, we worked together while I was ESAUC. And uh, she was the Minister, she was the Minister of uh, Women Affairs. The other person that's not in this picture uh, is uh, the mama of the group, the mommy of the group that was sadly missed. Uh, Professor Isaac O'Brien, who was Vice Chancellor, Covenant University, Vice Chancellor, Landmark University. Sadly, 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 uh, she passed on the 9th of January 2019, just a few days ago before uh, we conclude this recording. So what is that revitalization plan? It's taking on a number of things, access, curriculum engineering, modernizing, all of this. In another episode, we'll be giving you details of this, but good news is that all the senates of our universities, all of them, have received and made comments on the draft. Vice Chancellor have made comments. Many of the professors have made comments. So you are aware of this, of all these issues. So let us begin. Okay, we begin with objective number one. Recall that we have six objectives. Objective number one is about operational definitions. And we start with what is accreditation? Let, let, let's do a Google search of uh, uh, accreditation and find out what some generic definition is like. We can see here that accreditation is a process of validation in which colleges, let me make it this bigger, universities and other institutions of higher learning are evaluated. The standards for accreditation are set by peer review board whose members include faculty from various accredited colleges and universities. Yeah, but what is my operational definition for the purpose of this? Now, I take the definition from my contribution to this book, Higher Education in the World, 2017. Accreditation for Quality Assurance. What is at stake? In that book, I define accreditation as a process whereby an institution or a particular program is subject to review by a competent body or organization in order to establish whether or not the given institution or program meets a particular set of standards. So a given institution my, like my university, Lagos State University, or a program like uh, the program where um, teach where I te uh, that I, that I offer service BSc Computer Science Education is subject to review by competent body, competent body like National Investors Commission or organization like the Council for Registration of Engineers, Korean Council of Legal Education, MDC, and all that to establish whether or not the given institution or program meets a particular set of standards. So let's go to institutional accreditation. You will see that this is just a subset of the bigger definition of accreditation, whereby an institution is subject to review by a competent body organization to establish whether or not the given institution meets a particular set of standards. So what are the goals of institutional accreditation? Why do you want to do it? Well, institutional accreditation considers the characteristics of the institution as a whole. In other words, as Compared with program accreditation, you know, I, I've taken my university, for instance, Lagos State University. So when some uh, a group, a panel comes from NUC to accredit the BSc Computer Science Education program, they were only going to be looking at that program. They will come to my department and that's it. But for institutional accreditation, they will look at, you'll see in a minute, everything from the gate of that university, everything, all the operations, the entire operations of the university. So it evaluates the organizational capacity to be able to deliver quality university education. It does not seek to deal with any particular program in detail, although programs are reviewed 
as part of the entire thing. And it focuses on the following, among others, the governance of the institution. If governance is poor, then you are running a bad institution. But of course, the governance in Lagos State University is, you know, a great. Administrative strength, academic policies and procedures, quality of staff, physical facilities, and financial stability. So, the AUC Program Accreditation Team, when they get to your university, do they pay attention to the facilities for sports, games, and recreation? Of course not, because that is not the goal of program. Uh, of uh, uh, that's that's not the goal of uh, that's that's not the goal of program accreditation. What about the healthcare facilities? Do the uh, accreditors, when they come for a program accreditation, do they go to a health center? Do they look at the community system? Do they look at the clean environment where it's bushy? Do they look at supply of water, except, of course, to the labs? Uh, supply of electricity, good network of roads, intercom facilities, hassle-free experience of transcripts, good toilet facilities, maybe just in part. They do not likely you know, focus on this. Now, what is the reason? This is because it's beyond their mandate for, uh, for program accreditation. What's their mandate? They want to look at uh, curriculum. They want to look at uh, the facilities, funding, external perceptions, and all of that. Let's dive out briefly to the components of uh, program accreditation. In the revised instrument, which will soon be validated, we have seven areas, academic part matters. So you're looking at program philosophy, curriculum, admission requirements, and all of this. You are looking at staffing. You are looking at physical facilities. That's for the program. You are looking at library for the program, funding for the program, research and collaborations, Chris's sister and plus rating of graduates for that program. And I want to take this opportunity to thank these 318 uh, participants in the review of this undergraduate uh, accreditation instrument. Um, I'm going to scroll very quickly. If you can't find your name, it means that you are not standing up to be counted as somebody who believes in improving quality of the Nigerian University System through accreditation. So see them, uh, undergraduate accreditation. Let me accredit my title. <laughs> okay, fine. So see them. Uh, I'm going to go quickly through. These are professors from different universities. Uh, uh, if you can find your name, just give yourself a clap, uh, wherever. So you can see them. You can see them. You can see them. And our colleagues from the National Universities Commission are also here. They were part of reviewing this. So please be part of reviewing the, instru uh, the instrument for institutional accreditation. These are colleagues from NUC and all that. Thank you. So what are the benefits of institutional accreditation for our university system in Nigeria? It enhances quality. It stimulates efficiency. It promotes accountability and it enhances proprietor funding, among several others. So let's go on to the second objective. What are the elements of institutional accreditation? We have the following. We have governance and administration, financial stability, admission and student services, institutional resources, uh, student learning, institutional effectiveness, among a few others. So let, let, let's do a, a, a quick flip the other side about program accreditation. We're, got, we're, we're in objective number three now, for instance. We're looking at the process of institutional accreditation, but let's go back to program accreditation. So you know what is, is, is done, number one, is to set the minimum standards. That, that's the BMAS, where all of, all of us in the Nigerian University system and you see, we bring us together program by program. We develop the BMAS, and it's externally validated and nationally validated and all that. And then you have a self-study. You, the program people, you will measure yourself against, this, against these standards and report. And then NUC will select and train their creditors, and they will let them make a side visit to validate the entries in the uh, self-study. And the decision is made. Recommendation from the panel, take it to NUC. Babara Rashid, NUC as a secretary, will walk this through the, uh, of course, the director of accreditation 
will work this through the ES, ES to management, management to board of NUC, and then the thing is released, uh, disclosure. So the decision is if you are good, you say you are full accreditation. In some countries, uh, US, UK, South Africa, uh, and quite a number of others, you just say accredited, you are, you are accredited. So the program is accredited. Yeah, accredited. Nigeria will say you are full accreditation. If you are not good to go on all the measures, all the standards, then you say you have interim accreditation. That's what we say in Nigeria. In some places, we say partial accreditation and then provisional accreditation. If you are running a year year program, program that doesn't meet the minimum standards, then you have denied accreditation and you have to close shop. Or in some places, it's called not accredited. That's program. So for institutional accreditation, it's about the same thing. But you know, the scope is beyond programmable. The scope is complete institution. So minimum standards are set. You have self-study. You have selection and training of accreditors. The side visit. A decision is made. And then there's disclosure. The, the, the decision spectrum is the same. So you either have uh, when you, your student is good, it's accredited. In some places, you say you have confidence. Confidence. That, that's, the, that's the decision. Confidence. In, uh, when it's in between this AMBAC group, that is, you are not, you are not, uh, uh, you are not fully on ground in terms of the standards, it's a partial accreditation or partial confidence. And then when it's really, really bad, Say not accredited or no confidence. Yeah, so let's look at uh, let's let's do a global tour and see the cycles for program accreditation. Uh, in some countries, it is three years. That's uh, the maximum. In some, it is eight years. In between, so the range is between three years and eight years. If you say you have full accreditation, they allow you to run for eight years. But most countries, uh, about uh, eighty percent of the countries will have it as five years, just like we have for Nigeria. For relatively new university systems, you know, three years, well-established five, five uh, systems, five years. But for institutional accreditation, is the range is between five to ten years. The new system, that's university system, will let it stay for about eight years, well-established for ten years. So... Uh, the better model is to have program accreditation alongside institutional accreditation. So the combined model is uh, the best thing. So let's look at our fourth objective, which is on country case studies of institutional accreditation. Uh, we'll look at these regions, Africa, Australasia, Canada, US, that's North America, South America, and the rest. Yeah, so if you look at uh, this data, which you got from a survey in 2017 uh, on accreditation practices across the world, you find that in Africa, our region, uh, the National Quality Assurance Agencies uh, do program accreditation almost 100% of the time. And uh, about 82% uh, uh, do institutional accreditation or with what they call institutional audit. Asia, it's 95% uh, program accreditation, 100% institutional. Europe, 100% accreditation for programs, also for institutional audit. North America, that's uh, uh, Canada and the US, 100% uh, of the two. Now, what do this data tell us? Among several things, we can note that uh, the world's best 200 universities in 2017 are in those regions where you have both program and institutional accreditation. You will see in a minute as we progress uh, in this session that uh, when you do only program accreditation, you are looking at the narrow end of the, of the institution. If you look at institutional accreditation, you are looking at the entire uh, interplay of activities of, and forces within the institution. And if you combine the two, then chances are very high that you're going to have better quality 
than doing program alone or institution alone by way of accreditation. Yeah, moving on to objective number five, where we review the instruments for institutional accreditation, we can um, uh, take a handful here. We we'll look at the 2018 Africa Standards and Guidelines. We we'll look at uh, instruments that are used in the U.S. accreditation environment, and then we we'll look at the Africa Quality Rating Mechanism, AQRM. Yeah, let's begin by taking a look at the uh, African Standards and Guidelines for Quality Assurance in Higher Education, ASGQA. Uh, this is an instrument developed by the African Union and uh, the European Union uh, through a series of iterations, consultations, reviews, and all that. So what we have is for uh, institutional accreditation or institutional assessment, we, we have 13 standards. The first standard is vision, mission, and strategic objectives. St standard two, governance and management. Standard three, human resources. Standard four, financial resource management. Standard five, infrastructure and facilities. Standard six, student retention. It's looking like standard six, when, man, you know, uh, <laughs> like primary six, standard six. Student recruitment, admission, certification, and support services. Standard 7, design, approval, monitoring, and evaluation of study programs. Standard 8, teaching, learning, and assessment. Standard 9, research and innovation. Standard 10, community engagement. Standard 11, information management system. 12, public communication. And 13, collaboration, staff, and student mobility. Okay, let's look at AQR. So if we Google AQRM to look for the instrument, you have African Quality Rating Mechanism. Uh, let's see this one. Which one? Let's see. Uh, this is a 2017 an African Quality Rating Mechanism Institutional. So let's uh, open it up and see what we've got. Yeah, so this is AQRM. That's the instrument questionnaire. And uh, you have it, institutional general information, institutional profile, student profile, facilities, faculty staff profile, governance and management, teaching and learning, linkage with the industry sector, research and community outreach, internationalization, rating of best three departments, uh, governance and management infrastructure, finance, teaching and learning, research, publication and innovation, community stroke societal engagement, and all of that. So this is AQRM. That's the other uh, second instrument. Now let, let's go to the US. Or before that, but let's go to the UK and see how the institutional accreditation is carried out. Uh, we're not going to look at this. We're going to look at the product of the instrument. Yeah, this is the Quality Assurance Agency of the UK. We have institutional audit report for 2011 for Ash Ridge. Uh, so what we have is... Uh, uh, let's see now. Yeah, so we have it in different sections, introduction and background, uh, institutional management of academic standards, uh, institutional management of learning opportunities, uh, let's see, student approach to quality enhancement, collaborative arrangements, student arrangements for postgraduate research students, published information, features of good practice, and so on. Now, let's go on to the U.S. example. And we're going to, uh, U.S. model, and we're going to use, uh, by way of example, uh, a report of an institutional uh, accreditation. Yeah, where else to turn, other than the number one university in that uh, environment, Harvard, and uh, the accredited, accrediting agency is the New England Commission of higher education. You can see they have a profile here. Um, last comprehensive review was in 2009. And of course, they gained 10 year accreditation, you know, so it's a uh, next comprehensive review is, was for, for 2017. So we expect that report uh, to be out. So let's look at the last report of uh, Harvard. 
Yeah, so Harvard, here we go. This is the 2019 fall 20, 2009, so it's still fully uh, accredited. Uh, so the standards are 11. Mission and purposes, planning and evaluation, organization and governance, the academic program, the faculty and staff, the students, library and other information resources, physical and technological resources, financial resources, public disclosure and integrity as a, as a last. Uh, so you have information on uh, the uh, enrollment, uh, these locations, the type of program that we have in the place, chief external officers, the chairman, board of trustees, all these are uh, like biographical data for the institution. As you probably can see here, it's 141 page document. Uh, so we have this. Uh, what is of note here will be the different standards. So standard one, mission and purposes. So they will report on their mission and their purposes. Standard two, on the planning and evaluation. And it goes on and on and on like that. So let's come back home to Nigeria. Yes, uh, welcome to Nigeria. Uh, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, so for Nigeria, the National Investors Commission in 2010-2011 did a survey, global survey of practices of Eastern accreditation. Uh, different instruments were harvested and the standards, minimum standards were developed to cover the entire university system. Not only the programs in the department, but the bursary, the library, the hostels, uh, you can see that person drilling oil, the toilets, the general ambience of the environment because they all add up to quality. Because we are looking at accreditation of the entire institution. So all the inputs into the institution, all the processes, everything will count. So LUC came up with eight standards. Standard number one on institutional vision, mission, and strategic, strategic goals. By the way, as I said, this is the heart of this, uh, of this, uh, of this episode, the process. So number two is institutional governance and administration. Three, institutional resources. Four, quality of teaching, learning, and research. Five, institutional effic efficiency and effectiveness. Extension services and consultancies. That's standard six. Ha, standard six again. <laughs> Seven, transparency, financial management, and stability. And then eight, general ethos. So this is the instrument. It's called NUC slash Institutional Accreditation uh, Report Form. So panel, uh, the panel is to do the following. Your task as a member of the team is to objectively measure the performance against the relevant minimum standard. Uh, please call zero when no evidence of compliance uh, through to the maximum score for the sub-criterion full compliance. Now, so if you look at this, okay, the data uh, as you that you saw in the case of uh, QAA and uh, the US Harvard example, you have uh, all this data you know being reported. So you have standard number one, institutional vision, mission, and strategic goals. So the annotation of that is here, maximum score five. Overall university curriculum meeting level market demands that. So the Accreditor, institution accreditor, is expected to give a narration, full narration of the strengths of the university on that standard number one, and to indicate the difference, uh, the weaknesses. Standard two, institutional governance and administration. So the panel will have to measure the quality of governance and administration by council. You know that for the program accreditation, nothing concerns you with council, but here the ties to institution. Is the, uh, is the catchment. Uh, so we have to talk about council, talk about senate, police officers, registrar, and all of that. The quality of governance. You wonder how you go measure that. The measures are there, and you'll see in a minute. Maximum 20 points. 
committee system is uh, one of the main engines of uh, growth of a university. So effectively, the committee system, you have to write the strengths of the, of the university on that standard and also the weaknesses. It's to have resources, quality and quantity of academic infrastructure and facilities, the classrooms, labs, workshops, libraries, staff offices, facilities for sports, for games, for recreation, ICT, and healthcare, 20 marks. The regularity of water <laughs> and electricity to academic buildings, to hostels and relevant, bu uh, relevant buildings, adequacy and quality of network of roads and drainages, quantity and quality of toilets and other conveniences in academic buildings, hostels and other relevant buildings, cleanliness of the environment, it's not bushy, oof, you get many of our uh, institutions having bushy walls defaced with posters and the quality of landscaping. Adequacy of IT infrastructure, quality of students' hostels, adequacy of guidance and counseling. So for, strength, for uh, standards number three, you have the strengths and the weaknesses listed here. Let's go on to standard number four. We're almost there. Quality of teaching, of learning, and of research. So the general teaching and learning interactions, that is, you go to ask curriculum delivery, the accreditor will not be able to score if the school is not in if school is not in session. So school has to be in session for them to sit in the class or the workshop or practical class to be able to assess this. Level of de deployment of e-learning and use of new technologies for teaching and learning five. Now, this has appropriated 20 marks. Why? Because research is a major uh, strand of the work of uh, the university. Of the university, quality and relevance of research undertaken by staff, twenty marks. Application of research ethics, code of conduct, regulations of plagiarism, and other. So on four, we have all those things there. Going to five, institutional efficiency and effectiveness. This is taken for the five marks, by the way. Admission process, ease of registration, turnaround rate of mails in the office of the pro chancellor. So you write a letter to the pro chancellor, vice chancellor. It takes forever to come out. They will be penalized here, or to the provost, or to the dean, or HOD. Staff recruitment process, staff welfare, internal and external efficiency, visibility and richness of web presence, proportion of international staff, timely release of results. So that's number five. For number six of eight. Ex, uh, let's see the extension relationship with internal and external constituencies and consultancy quality in that case uh, so you give the strengths and weaknesses now for number seven transparency fund generation financial management and stability transparency and accountability in fund management fund generation audit report stability publishing of annual reports so this will be a then the general ethos is number eight the last one Staff and student discipline tone, level of non manifestation of social vices. So that's it, but that's not it all. We got to now look at the uh, decision that is taken. Now, if uh, the university has scored 80% and above, it gets an A, plus, and that's full accreditation. It has a 10 year life cycle, lifespan. If it is this uh, 70 to 79, Full accreditation, 10 year lifespan, also, but that's an A. So we're able to distinguish between A plus and A, then B plus and B, 80 year cycle, five year cycle, and that's it. So the panel members will then sign. Now, let's look at uh, the standards. The standards are now well clearly defined here. Uh, this is a very good appendix, appendix one, is to your vision, mission, and strategy goals. So they have to be clear and realistic. Strategy goals have time frames and are measurable. And all of this, which you can read, uh, of course, will send the electronic version of this to all our reviewers. Institutional resources, great teaching. Each faculty or college has a commodious, visibly impressive building. Uh, visibly impressive. You get to some universities, they are just like small, small bungalows. So they, they, are, uh, they, 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 they will be, uh, they will underperform here. All departments have ample space for staff offices, classrooms, labs, workshops, library, 
There's a health center with inpatient and outpatient facilities. Staffing includes full-time medical officers, pharmacists, technologists, and nurses in the health center. Academic buildings on campus, hostels, and staff quarters are supplied with at least 12 hours of electricity daily and 24-hour supply of water. You can read all of this clean campus environment and this quality of teaching. So you go into the class, class is participatory. It's not threatening and eagerness to learn pervades the face of the students. Lectures are based on the latest developments in discipline as obtained from the most recent literature and the rest. Quality of research. Now, how do we assess that? Minimum of 70% of staff at the university have published at least two articles in reputable international journals the last 12 calendar months. Minimum of this. So we will then overlay this on the uh, on the on the on the uh, assessment scores. So where do you get the data sources? They are here in Appendix 2. For institutional vision, mission, and strategy goals, where are you going to get the data? From completed and validated self-study form, self form report, excuse me, the university st strategic plan, annual reports, visitation plan reports, faculty and departmental handbooks. For institutional governance, you have annual reports and all of that. For institutional resources, uh, so you get all the data sources uh, uh, from here. So that, that said, uh, for the NUC instrument, which as uh, I mentioned earlier, we have it's an amalgam of good practices from everywhere else. But this instrument is uh, dated 2012, used like 2012, I reckon. And uh, there's now time for you and I to make an input towards uh, improving it based on recent uh, developments. So that takes us to objective number five, and then we'll press on now to objective number six, which is the last. Objective number six is the future of institutional accreditation. Uh, on the 31st of January 2019, uh, a, a team of, uh, from the NUC Strategy Advisory Committee, Professor Jagai Sir, Professor Briggs, Peter Okebukola, Honorable Minister, uh, Professor Michael Fabrodi, SG, were there to look at the future of accreditation at the Chair 2019 uh, conference. And a lot of uh, forces were identified as uh, uh, going to, that will be important in shaping institutional accreditation. Of course, institutional accreditation will go on forever and a day. It will still keep going on. But some forces will shape the way institutional accreditation is conducted in the coming years. I, I, I make a mention of five of them. One is the demand for competency-based university education. So your institution should be able to produce graduates that are competent in medicine, in education, in history, and all of that. How do you assess that? I mean, you just get the, uh, the self-study form. will say that you have many teachers, curriculum is good. The toilets are good and all of that. Do all of those things translate to the competency of the university graduates? If they do, then we don't have any reason why the Nigerian public will say that our graduates are half baked or quarter baked or whatever because of this competency thing. So the Eastern accreditation should look uh, deeply at competency based delivery. How, how would that work? It will work, for instance, in saying, you get to a university and uh, you say, oh, uh, the medical program, oh, let's see one or two. You just randomly pick maybe 500 level students. Okay, let, let, uh, this is a procedure in medicine. Come and demonstrate it. Or in education that I am, you say, okay. Now, you come, how do you set up a biology laboratory? How do you preserve material? How do you section? You come and show me. So that's important in future uh uh, deployment of history accreditation. The other is the demand for increased public trust in our university. This related to this one. The, the, the public is no longer trusting the uh, trusting our institutions to deliver quality university education. So history accreditation must respond to this force. The other is the digitization and increases of technology. Of course, we know what this means. Over the next uh, couple of years and decades from now, 
technology that's moving at a decent pace will continue to transform the way we structure and deliver uh, the curriculum in our universities. And also, also even manage the stamping out or reducing academic corruption and el elimination of corruption in accreditation. So you find a system whereby uh, two universities, uh, one has scored 81%, the other one has scored 85%, and you go there and you find that these universities are just like glorified secondary schools. So, and the reason may be that the accreditors have been compromised. So you now get a system where you want to now rank universities and you get all these spurious high scores because of this corruption in accreditation. So for student accreditation, we got to watch out for this particular force. And then the last one is increase, increase in non-traditional providers, e-learning, open and distance learning, uh, flexible learning, and all of these are the forces that will shape institutional accreditation in the coming years. So now we conclude. Yeah, so in this session, uh, what did we do? We operationally defined this accreditation, institutional accreditation, study objectives and benefits, presented some country case studies, described process and product, reviewed instruments for institutional accreditation in Nigeria and across the world, and we made a forecast for the future of institutional accreditation. So just before we go, it is uh, important to know that program accreditation, as we're doing in Nigeria now, plus institutional accreditation that we did at some point, and uh, we put a pause on it, if we do a combination of these two, we're going to have a better quality university system and a blueprint for the rapid revitalization of university education in Nigeria by 2023. The Rashid plan will have been accomplished. Thank you. God bless. Well, that brings us to the end of uh, this episode. I hope to see you again very, very soon.